This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star of today's show is the Thrustmaster TSS Handbrake Sparco Mod for PC Sim Racing. The TSS Handbrake is a little bit more than just a handbrake as it comes in two different modes. It can be in handbrake mode or it can also be set into the sequential shifter mode. Now in the handbrake mode it also has two different positions. You could have it in the vertical position like you'd find in a rally car or a lot of drifting cars or you can put it in the horizontal position like you'd find in most sedans or some drifting cars. The TSS Handbrake is officially licensed by Sparco and has a one-to-one -one replica Sparco shifter handle on on top. The TSS handbrake is a stylish industrial design and it is made 90% of metal. It also utilizes the Hall Effect type sensors for high accuracy and extremely long life cycles. The shifter retails for somewhere between $260 and $299, but I have seen them on sale, so you might want to do a little searching before you just buy one, but that gives you about the price range it's intended for. Now, the naming on this shifter is a little odd or a little bit confusing, as they do call it the Sparco Mod, but it's not a mod. It's the complete unit, and there is not a non-Sparco version of the handbrake shifter from Thrustmaster available. In addition to that, there are actually two different models of the shifter available. There's this one that we're testing here, the TSS Handbrake Sparco mod, and that one is completely built for the PC. In addition to that, there is the Plus model. It has the same name with the added Plus, and that one is actually Xbox One compatible with certain Thrustmaster wheels, or PS4 compatible with certain Thrustmaster wheels. And again, this one is the PC only version. And then lastly, when it comes to the confusing parts of the title is the title itself, the TSS handbrake. Well, it is a lot more than just a handbrake. It's a handbrake and a sequential shifter. And I would have included that in the naming of it as well, but I hope that clarifies things for you. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at the TSS handbrake Sparco mod by Thrustmaster and what it comes with. As I mentioned, it's a good looking shifter in an industrial all metal sort of way. The beauty side of things start at the top with a Sparco one-to-one -one replica handle. It is a cut and shaped piece of aluminum in black with six rubber grippers going around it. It has a cool Sparco logo on top that is much nicer than just a sticker. The handle itself is 3.4 inches or 8.5 centimeters tall and then it has a red anodized locking ring on the bottom of the handle. Below the handle and extending downward is a silver colored aluminum bar that connects it to the TSS base. It can be mounted in multiple positions with the lowest vertical setting being 13 inches or 33 centimeters above the mounting deck. When mounted in its highest position, it extends 16 inches or 40 and a half centimeters above the deck. This bar sandwiches between two thinner bars that extend down into the TSS base and then use two thick bolts along with a combination of washers to hold it together. The base itself is a rectangular shape made of black and silver metal with a bunch of bolt heads sticking out giving it that industrial look to it. The top plate is rounded over the top preventing any rough edges on the top side of the base and has dual Thrustmaster logos on top of the brushed silver finish. The side plates are in black with all of the adjustment bolts, the sliding bolts, and the hinge bolts all being exposed. It has a Thrustmaster logo on each side and then towards the front has a silver plate mounted to it with a Sparco logo placed there. Pretty racy looking to me. The front side has the push rod that actually extends out of the base when the handbrake is operated. It also has the electronic switch to go from handbrake to shifter mode. The back side has the heavy duty detachable cable and its overall dimensions are about 8 inches or 20 centimeters long by a little over 2.5 inches or 6.5 centimeters wide and then about 4 inches or 10 centimeters tall. Overall it is solid, somewhat compact and again very racy. Now when it comes to mounting things like handbrakes and shifters, I gotta tell you, the world isn't quite as polished as it is when you're talking about mounting wheels and pedals to your rig. For the most part, every rig company on earth now accommodates all three of the big manufacturers, Thrustmaster, Fanatic, and Logitech, when it comes to wheels and pedals. But again, when it comes to handbrakes, sequential shifters, when it comes to other things, you're not always taken care of right off the bat. Now Thrustmaster gave you a handful of different options when it comes 
comes to mounting this sequential shifter handbrake combo on your rig. On the bottom side of the base are eight different mounting holes, each threaded for M6 hardware. The closer holes are a little over four inches or 104 millimeters apart, with the further holes being five and a third inches or 136 millimeters apart, and then a hair over one and a half inches or 40 millimeters wide. There are also three M6 threaded mounting points on both sides of the base. In the case of my R-Seat S1 chassis, well, once again, it came to the rescue. It was actually already pre-drilled to accommodate this. I was actually able to put it to the outside of a shifter and use it in the handbrake position. Just bolted it down with four M6 bolts and no problem. Also, I was able to get rid of the shifter, put this into the inside position as a sequential shifter. Again, four M6 bolts and it was all taken care of. In the case of your rig, your design, you'll be able to follow a diagram at their website and you've seen the dimensions that I gave you there. From there, plug the connector into the USB wire and then plug the USB wire into your computer. Once plugged in, my computer immediately recognized the TSS handbrake. All I had to do was map my controls and start driving. It was that simple. Now, on the other hand, you can download the drivers from Thrustmaster, install them, and use their software suite, and that will actually allow you to adjust the analog travel of the throw. It won't be the physical travel, just the engagement point of the shifter, but completely unnecessary. Now, when I started driving, I used it in handbrake mode. Number one, that's the way it came in the box. Number two, that's the way it's being branded. And it all starts off with how the handle feels in your hand. This particular design is unlike any I've felt before. Usually they are just a knob or rounded piece of metal that is rather simple in design. This handle is actually made up of a few different pieces. The center or cut and shaped piece of metal has grooves running up and down and your hand and fingertip can feel them giving you a little more grip. And then the six different rubber rings that seem to fit between your fingers giving even more of a grippy feeling to your hand. You can grab it with total confidence and at the same time nothing extra to get hung up on when releasing your hand. It felt great in my hand and immediately elevated itself to my favorite brake handle ever. Kudos Sparko on your one part in the design. When yanking on the brake or pulling on it under action, you can feel how firm the handbrake is. Despite being over 13 inches tall and extending 9 inches over the base, the handle is rigid. It is firm and it feels immensely robust in the intended direction of movement. Now upon closer inspection, there's a hint of side to side movement and after extended use, it did even cause a hint of paint rub on the lower upright mounting bars. But that side to side play is only felt when literally trying to go the wrong way. The overall throw of the handle in handbrake mode and in the upright position is about four inches or 10 centimeters front to back. I found that distance to be perfect or plenty to work with to allow for light braking and all the way up to hard braking with a full pull on the handle. And with that much distance to work with, you'll have no trouble finding any variation in strength between the lightest of touches and the heaviest of throws from this brake lever, making this a very useful tool. The movement is smooth and it is a constant rate with no real progression feel. And at the end of the movement, you're hit with a hard stop. In game, it works as a lever, not like a button. This means that the more you move it, the more it presses the rear brakes of the car. Just like the brake pedal operates all four brakes and so much more accurate than using a button which is a on or off switch or 100% or zero all of the time. The overall resistance of the handbrake was medium to light in touch and that it is not adjustable. The overall result is a huge upgrade from not having a handbrake for the fans of rally car and drifting. And for those who like rally car and drifting, it becomes one of the most important components and allows you to drive it in a much more realistic fashion. You can control the rear end of the car and how much it pivots almost with the accuracy of having steering on the rear end of the car. Again, so essential for properly drifting or rally car driving. 
The handbrake in the vertical or upright position is how you expect to see it in most rally car scenarios. But for those in the drifting scene, or for those who are looking to duplicate the handbrake that you'd find in a sedan or a street car being used for maybe drifting, you're expecting to find it in the horizontal position more like this type of a handbrake. And you can actually make that modification or change with this shifter. It all starts with removing the lower bolt and then adding a spacer along with the secondary plate and then a third bolt that you can then change the angle of the handbrake to anything from vertical to horizontal. When using it in this mode, instead of pulling back on the vertical bar, you're actually pulling upward like on a typical street car. From that point on, everything is the same. Same amount of friction, same amount of robust feeling, and the same advantages and accuracy of using a measured device for rear brakes instead of using a button. In the end, it worked out great, but my preference was in the vertical rally position for sure. Now, as I've mentioned throughout, this is actually also a sequential shifter. Now, it doesn't do both simultaneously. You do actually have to change it from handbrake to sequential mode, and it is fairly easy to do. Only takes a couple minutes, and you only need one tool to actually make the changeover. It all starts by loosening the bolts on both sides of the shifter that are labeled SEQ for sequential. Out of the box, they are in the other position. So to switch over to sequential, we loosen both sides of the bolt slightly, and then we can push that bar on both sides into the sequential position, and then lock them back down. Then you need to switch the electronic switch on the front also into sequential mode. And just like that, the TSS is now a sequential shifter. When in the shifter mode, the handle now moves backward and forward from its resting position. It now has about one and a quarter inches or 32 millimeters of travel in forward and back directions. When the shifter is activated, it is met with the same resistance as when it was in handbrake mode, just a lot less travel. There is no detent or friction to create a release point, but it moves until hitting its hard stop in either direction. I do find that when driving with a sequential shifter that I tend to really abuse it. I smack it forward at lightning speed at times to downshift, and then for upshifting, I just grab and yank on the thing with no thought or concern for its well-being. The TSS handbrake dealt with those moments well enough that I have no concern for its overall strength. That stiffness in the forward and rear direction that we talked about earlier can really be felt when hitting the stopping point and completing a shift. The shifter is smooth in its movement, the shifter's throw is relatively short in distance, and this all leads to very fast shifts. So I've told you all about the Thrustmaster TSS Handbrake Sparco Mod sequential shifter combo. We've talked about using it in various modes. We've talked about installation, but you know me, I always like to break things down just to keep it simple with the good, the not so good, and the bottom line, starting off with the good, and that it is all in one. Handbrake, sequential shifter combo, everything you need. GT or rally position. Great feeling handle, my favorite handle ever. Stiff or rigid in movement direction. Very smooth movement. Adjustable height. Robust, made of metal. Lots of mounting options. Plug and play. And it's cool looking. And now on to the not so good, and that being that it is a little bit expensive for a handbrake sequential shifter combo. No adjustable tension. No detent or friction point upon release. No travel adjustment. And a small amount of left to right wiggle. And now on to the bottom line. The Thrustmaster TSS Handbrake Sparco mod is absolutely the nicest piece of hardware that Thrustmaster ever made for sim racing. I hate to say this, but anybody who knows their flight gear knows exactly what I'm talking about. Because if you look at their top of the line HOTUS flight stick, or you look at their new rudder pedals, they're all very high end, they're all made of metal, they are pro flight sim equipment. When you look at their lineup of sim racing gear, unfortunately, they make very, very good wheels. Some of the best wheels around, but they do top out at that medium level made in plastic type steering wheel. We're still waiting on the pro gear from Thrustmaster when it comes to wheels and pedals. That is, until 
the Thrustmaster TSS Handbrake Sparco mod. Working with companies like Sparco, making a high-end all-metal type product like this, maybe this is them uncorking the genie or opening the bottle, and hopefully this will be the beginning of higher-end products from them. Better wheels, and even more importantly, better pedals from Thrustmaster. Now with that said, the TSS handbrake, it isn't necessarily the best handbrake available on the market. And when you look at it as a sequential shifter, it actually isn't really the best sequential shifter that you're gonna find on the market. But as a combination, it does the combination of the two rather well, and that might be perfect or the perfect solution for a lot of sim racers out there, especially if you're into rally car or drifting, it's gonna help. Now we can sit here and argue about the need for a shifter in sim racing all day long. It's actually one of the longest running arguments on all of sim racing, and I'm not here to prove things one way or another. It really is up to you. But I can tell you, for me, sometimes when using a sequential shifter, it's actually, there's a rhythm to it, and I actually get more in tune with the car at times. I find that under downshifting conditions with paddles, that I tend to paddle downshift too quickly. With the sequential shifter, it keeps me in the rhythm of the car and just a little bit more hooked up but it does come at the penalty of removing a hand every so often to make those shifts and that just isn't as precise and that's probably why they've gone to paddle shifters in most high performance cars at this point now when it comes to rally car when it comes to drifting a handbrake is an absolutely essential tool it is part it is synonymous with drifting and rally car driving and you just can't do it quite as well without and using a button can be done but again it's an on or off switch it's a hundred percent or zero percent it's how quickly you can press the button i guess to get those variations but when you really want to do rally car when you really want to do drifting when you're really looking for that ultimate sim racing sim experience on those levels you need to use a handbrake it needs to be a variable level lever and it needs to get somewhere in the neighborhood of about four inches of travel like this one does plenty to work with it's going to change your sideways driving that's for sure so i hope i've told you everything that you want to know about the tss handbrake spark mod i hope i've answered any questions that you might have if i haven't you can check them out yourself at thrustmaster.com and remember there are two different variations of the shifter the one we're testing here the tss handbrake sparko mod for the pc only then there's also the plus model version of it with xbox one and ps4 compatibility which i couldn't find for sale anywhere but you will find it at their website and if you have any questions of me about this shif shifter be sure to email me at sean s-h-a-u-n at the and i'll be sure to do my best to answer your questions as well be sure to subscribe to this channel be sure to tell a friend about what we're doing so we can continue to grow this is the sim pit i'm sean cole and i'll see you on the track